A few months ago, the World Players Union published a study that revealed that mental health issues are significantly more widespread amongst current and former footballers than the general population. Their research identified injuries and the subsequent isolation of players from their clubs as one of the leading causes for these issues. On that same day, members of the newly formed Mental Health Charter gathered at Wembley Stadium to discuss how they can tackle mental health in each of their respective sports and more importantly, reverse the stigma around it. The Mental Health Charter for Sport and Recreation was created in March of this year. It really is an opportunity for sport, sports organisations to be able to pledge their support to concerns about mental health and actually sign up to doing something about it. I'm in support of it because my own personal journey with, with mental ill health has been well documented. I am so aware not only of the power of sport but also the prevalence of the issue within sportsmen and women. Last year minded a, a report into professional sports people uh, to look at their mental health and well-being and identified that there are three touch points of when uh, athletes struggle in their career. Uh, when they retire, um, when they leave or exit the game and they struggle in silence. Kobanani attended the day-long event to see what leaders in football are doing to systematically support mental well-being among their players and ask what fans can do to spark a cultural shift in attitudes. There was a need for players to you know, have the opportunity to talk about stuff. I think what we found was that people forget that footballers are people first, then footballers and there were people after they leave the game. The academy structure, for example, so children coming into academies very young, it's their whole life, their whole, whole social network is fixated around the club. And then if they become injured or if um, at 21 they, they don't make it, their whole hopes, dreams and aspirations, their career prospects, their friendship networks are all gone. I think a lot of onus is put on the physical aspect of players, but not enough is put done on the emotional side of things. What it is about football is that it gives you an identity. My own identity was inextricably linked with the sport. So when that's taken away, my identity, or a huge part of it, was also taken away with it. It's absolutely crucial that players are supported when they're, when they're coming up to retirement. It becomes easier when you're educated in how to be able to identify your self-esteem and your worth and your value in life without it being attributed to something external. This isn't just a football issue, this is a societal issue. It's absolutely essential that uh, former and current players talk about their, their emotional health, their well-being. They have a really powerful role in reducing stigma and discrimination. If we can just get more people talking about mental health issues and being comfortable talking about them, players who have got issues will be more comfortable raising it. Coaches will be more comfortable dealing with it. Leading the charge is Colin Dolan, founder of Mental Health Football UK, a network of leagues dedicated to combating mental health issues. With the help of Everton in the community, the organisation that helped him get back on his feet, Dolan organises an annual competition with clubs across the UK in the spirit of solidarity and mental fitness and well-being. Everton in the community saved my life. I would be in the gutter or be dead if it wasn't for the football. The nature of modern life means that everybody's living with higher levels of stress and insecurity and yet the services that are there for people, the support hasn't caught up. We need to have a much bigger focus on mental health as a society. And actually football is a great vehicle to bring that message forward. It gives you a platform to express yourself and also it teaches you how you can learn to cope with your diagnosis because it gives you a purpose in life. I actually do feel alive when I go on a football pitch and it is a buzz that no other form of therapy has ever given me. This is our medication. Mental Health Football with UK was born out of a necessity. Use football as a form of therapy to improve the quality of people's lives. That is it in a nutshell. Football, as we've seen in the past, can be a vehicle for communication with the wider public on an issue like racism. But it's also now important that football uses its power to show how we need, as a society, to change attitudes towards uh, mental health. This, it just changes people's lives. This is not just a, a good thing, this is an amazing thing. If you were to pull a hamstring or twist an ankle, the first thing you do is you go to your physio. And what we want the players now to do and feel comfortable about is, if you have a mental health or wellbeing problem, you know, we want you to come forward to us. What we want to see is that clubs 
coaches, managers across the entire game really embracing this, this work and talking positively about mental health and wellbeing. My journey is incredibly different to thousands of other journeys that go on out there. It's irrelevant how many people know about what's going on in your personal and psychological life. It's fundamentally important that someone knows. So there we have it, from professional to grassroots, football is playing a key role in eradicating stigmas, moving the conversation forward and actively supporting those in need. However, it doesn't stop there. Like Clark Carlisle said, everyone suffers from mental health issues differently. But regardless of circumstances, it's fundamental that someone's aware when our mental health suffers. And the responsibility lies within each and every one of us to help out those closest to us when we know they're suffering. If you enjoyed the video, like it, and most importantly, subscribe to Copper 90. Let us know in the comments if you're affected by these issues and if you'd like to see Copper 90 touch on more of the same subject.